micro test gracious and loving god we come to you this morning as we prepare for this worship service oh lord this rainy day let this rain be the rain of the holy spirit open the door of your heaven and then all people who worship here feel the power of the holy spirit here oh lord let your will be done here let your will is getting fulfilled in the people's life as they are getting ready to worship you oh lord help us stay in your will in your love in your grace in your hope oh lord we love you and we are so excited to worship you this morning 하나님의 사랑과 하나님의 임재하심에 우리가 감사드리며 이곳에 예배합니다 어 주님 감사합니다 아멘 
Good morning and welcome to Epworth Church. So glad to see each and every one of you here. The flowers on the altar this morning are given in honor of Joyce Bowen's birthday. Happy birthday, Miss Joyce, and love from her daughters, Michelle and Jennifer. The Administrative Council will meet on Tuesday, March 9th at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. All council members are required to wear their mask and please social distance for a safe meeting. You can find the address for Carol Oakley on the screen. I'm sure she would love for some cards and mail. The March and April upper room are ready and they can be found on the piano or in the North X. Please have one when you leave the sanctuary and, you, and use it in your devotions. Will you please stand and join me into the call of worship? Christ died for our trespasses, but was raised for our justification. Thanks to God. Please join with me in the invocation. God, your Son, Jesus Christ, bore the cross for our salvation and was raised from the dead for the redemption of the world. Give us the courage to take up the cross and follow him that through his grace we may accept the cost of faithful discipline and receive the joy of everlasting life with Christ, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Ms. Amber. The Lord be with you. So good to see you this morning. All shining faces coming through this rainy day. <laughs> uh, I want to recognize our church family on Facebook today. Uh, Laura Longorelli and Candy Williams. Candy says, good morning at birth. Thanks for you are here when I can't be there. <laughs> we hope to see you, see you again, Candy, soon. Uh, Ed Bull, good morning. And Dawn Callum is watching with us. Martha William is worshiping with us. Ivan Turner, Patty Hopkins Barrow. Dawn Callum says, good morning to all. And I am watching. <laughs> and Faye Wilfong says, good morning. So Faye, good morning. And uh, Linda and Ivan Turner are worshiping with us too. These are the people now I can see now, uh, but there are more than this. So, yes, we can worship continually. Um, as we are uh, ready for children's time, children, today we're going to have some different way of hello Jesus. So usually I ask you to uh, close your eyes, but today you can open your eyes. Yeah. So, but Miss Eleanor, are you on channel two today? Good. <laughs> okay, so children, as we are getting ready to this children's message, I want to invite you to see our lantern cross. Okay, I'm going to lead you to each part of the cross. When you see the cross, imagine that Jesus is here, hanging on the cross. And you stretch your hand. Please show me your hand, children. And you stretch your hand according to I lead you. And when you stretch your hand, your hand will touch Jesus' body. And that will relieve Jesus' pain. 
because Jesus on the cross was very painful. Shall we do that? Okay, now first we touch Jesus' feet. And God, please use our touch to let Jesus' pain on the feet easy. And now we are moving to Jesus' tummy. Okay, God, please let Jesus don't feel, don't feel a lot of pain in, her, in his tummy. Now we are moving to Jesus' right arm and right hand. You touch your hand, Jesus, the right hand, and pretend you are cleaning his hand because now it's bleeding a lot. Now we are moving to his left hand and we are cleaning, touching his hand and praying, God, Please don't make him so painful. And now we are moving to Jesus' head. And can we clean his some blood and the water and see Jesus' eyes, his nose. And now Jesus is speaking to you. I love you. Can you hear that? Shall we say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Okay, now you can see me. <laughs> so, Jesus, before even he took the cross, the scripture today we're going to read, Jesus said, if you really love me, if you really want to follow me, you should do these three things. Can you see here? What is the first? Can you read it? Deny yourself. And the second? And the third? Follow Jesus. And all these three actions, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. Can you understand what it means? No, it's hard. So today, I'm going to share the story that teaches us the meaning of why we need to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus. And I need a helper, and because of the social distance and everything, I'm going to invite Sammy to help me today, the one who is safer, <laughs> although he's close to me. Sammy, come here. the story of a girl. She really, really wanted to see how the heaven and the hell are different. Mm -hmm. So one day, Sammy, the girl, uh, prayed to God and saying, God, how is it different from hell and heaven? And this is what God showed that girl. The very first time this girl, God showed this girl about hell. And do you think there was a surprise, very big surprise when she went to hell? What was it? Yeah, what was it? <laughs> the hell looked really good. They had a big table. There were so many food. So it looks like hell was still a good place. Mm -hmm. But people in hell, they couldn't eat anything. They were hungry, and they were dying because they couldn't, they couldn't feed themselves. Do you know the reason? Although there are so many food in the hell they couldn't eat? Yes, their spoons were so long. So what happened was they could feed themselves. So for example, today I brought your favorite cereal. Yay. Yes. Yeah, try to feed yourself. Oh, yeah. If the people try to get here, their spoon was getting longer and longer, just like a Pinocchio's nose. So, can you feed? No, 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 don't, don't drink. 
Yes. So that's what was happening in the hell. So that was hell. A lot of food, but nobody couldn't eat. And then God showed the girl the heaven. And she was very surprised again. Do you know why? That was the same. Yes. That was exactly the same. There in the heaven, there was a big table, and people were there, and then the same spoon, same food. But here in heaven, they were able to feed themselves, and they look so happy in heaven. Do you know what is different? <laughs> You're right. What happened was, people in heaven, they were feeding themselves across the table. Yeah. Okay, can I have your cereal too? Oh, that's good. Isn't it good? Thank you so much, Sammy. Now you can go back to your place. Mm -hmm. So, that's the meaning of denying yourself. When we try to feed ourselves, you know, we cannot help ourselves. That's what's happening when we don't deny ourselves. We need to deny ourselves with God's eyes, Jesus' love, and then feed each other across the table. Can you see the cross? That's how we take the cross and follow Jesus. Now, can you understand what is the meaning of deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Jesus? Can we remember that? <laughs> okay, I will pray whenever you are tempted to put what you want first. What, you're, uh, what you want to do right now, something like that. Whenever that time comes, you know, in your bag, I put the spoon so that you can remember today's message. And remember, you don't feed yourself. Let Jesus feed yourself and let you feed others because that's how we take our cross. Amen? Okay. Shall we pray? <laughs> I'm glad you guys like your spoon and I'm glad yours are not long like mine. <laughs> hey, let's pray. Oh, hold your hand, close your eyes, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, we love you so much. Help us put you first in my life and serve you and others. That is our cross. Amen. So today's scripture reading comes from Mark 8, beginning uh, verse 33. Listen to the word of God. Then Jesus began to teach them the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and, he, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quietly openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay. For now, my, my iPhone is frozen, so let me make sure we are still 
Good. Yeah, we are still on. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Would you pray with me? O oh Christ, our Lord, we love you and praise you with all of our hearts and minds and souls, and we desire to hear your voice. O oh Lord, help us to listen to your voice by the power of the Holy Spirit that make us deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow you. Let the words of our mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable, our rock and our redeemer. People of God said, Amen. So, Mark 8. <laughs> Another very challenging scripture that we read today. And I would like to start this sermon with one of the difficult questions that I was heard. I heard, and that was from our son Sammy. And one day he asked me, Mother, what is your secret ingredient of your grilled cheese? So grilled cheese here. And that was the hardest question that I have ever had. <laughs> Because for some reason, our children, they know a different taste between Paul's grilled cheese and my grilled cheese. And I can understand that because we share the same recipe, my recipe. <laughs> so one day, Sammy wanted to learn how to cook mommy's grilled cheese. And he saw that Paul and I share the same recipe. And Sammy said, Mom, no, you must have a special or a secret ingredient. What is that? Many of you, if you know my lack of confidence in cooking, there was a hard question to answer. But Holy Spirit was good, and this is how I answered to Sammy. And I said, Sammy, that is love. Love is my secret ingredient. I put a lot of love in my cooking. <laughs> now today, as we read Mark chapter 8, I think of this conversation a lot. Now, all creatures looked the same. They looked very similar. But what made my mom's creatures different? Hmm? Just like that, in our imagination, all of Jesus' disciples were the same, and they acted the same. Peter and other disciples and the crowd were there today with Jesus, and they were listening to Jesus. So again, for us, all of them looked like the same, but for Jesus, they were not. Jesus saw inside of their heart, and Jesus knew that they were different, very different. Especially Peter was very different. So Jesus said, Peter, get behind me, Satan. What a harsh word. Nobody wants to hear their words from Jesus. But for Jesus, it was not, because Jesus indeed saw something different in Peter, because Peter was reacting very different when Jesus shared something very important, Jesus' identity, especially secret identity. Yes, that was secret. If you read the whole gospel readings, you may find Jesus often act very, very weird. Whenever he did something very special, powerful, mighty, the miracles and healing, he always said, keep it in secret. Don't tell it to anybody. And that was very weird. Even today in Mark 8, Right before Jesus, uh, right before they talked to this, Peter talked to Jesus, Jesus, 
You are the Messiah. That's a good thing. But Jesus told Peter again, and the crowd there, don't tell it anyone. Don't tell it. However, today, although he said don't tell it anyone, he acted different today. He began to reveal the secret identity to everybody. As I told you, there were so many people surrounding Jesus there, but now his identity was no longer secret because he boldly declared the Son of God must undergo great suffering and he will be rejected by the authorities. He will be killed and after three days, rise again. And for you and me, it's no longer a secret. We read the Bible and we believe Jesus, so we know this. But still, whenever we read this text, that gives us uncomfortable here. So that help us to imagine the first group of people who heard this secret identity of Jesus. You know, they would be very shocking, shocking. It will be like for us today, Jesus would be rejected by our bishops, megachurch pastors, and all the evangelists, they hate Jesus. They reject Jesus. And then they want to accuse Jesus. They're going to sue Jesus. And then Jesus would give the death penalty. No, we don't want to see that. We don't want Jesus to speak about that. So we will be like Peter saying, Jesus, Jesus, no, I don't want you to go through that. But Jesus may not like if we act like that because that's what he did with Peter today. Jesus didn't like Peter's reaction. Although Peter said, you are the Messiah, his reaction now showed that he did not understand what the Messiah meant. Because Peter didn't want to embrace Jesus' secret identity, the suffering Messiah. So the reason that Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan, was very simple. She just said, you don't think about the God's thing. You only think about your things. That's why Satan liked to do that. Satan didn't like the Messiah's suffering, death, and resurrection. And believe it or not, Satan knew about Jesus' identity very well. Now remember last Sunday, Satan knew the word of God. Even Satan believed that Jesus is the Son of God. Even Satan, he knew that God's ultimate power from God's kingdom. But Satan was a Satan because he didn't like them. He didn't like what he knew about Jesus. He chased Jesus to disrupt his ministry. So there was one of interesting descriptions about these Satan's characteristics. And that was from Max Lucado. And he said, Satan is a superhuman narcissist. A narcissist? <laughs> if you have someone, you some friends, and it's someone you know who is sick to love of themselves. Sick of self-pity. Although that brings self-destruction in their life, that is a narcissist. And Satan had that tendency. Because Satan really loved himself. And Satan liked to misuse God's word to tempt others. Satan wanted to misuse God's power for his benefit. So indeed, as Jesus said to the Peter, Satan didn't think about God's work. He only think about his own thing. And very, very sadly, Peter 
was following Satan too. Get behind me, Satan! Jesus rebuked Peter, but Jesus, with God, with grace, he gave another teaching moment to Peter and the disciples, so that they can escape the Satan's way, but keep in God's way. That was deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. What do we deny? Just like we saw through children's message, we need to deny our tendency to only think of ourselves, only love ourselves, even be sick with love ourselves. In this condition, people were not very different from Satan. Because you think of having two narcissists in the same room. <laughs> one narcissist with their desire, one narcissist with their desire, and their narcissistic desires conflict. And what happened? They blame each other. They accuse each other. Even they harm each other. And that is hell. We need to deny ourselves. But we cannot do it by ourselves. We can do it by the power of the cross. Because on the cross, Jesus revealed his secret identity here. Jesus didn't think himself a lot, just like we see the cross. No, Jesus finds himself in the relationship with God the Father. And then he found himself in the relationship with all God's children. And can you see the center of the cross here? The heart? In the heart, what did he do? He gave his life to us. That sacrificial love that brought us freedom to love God, to love God's people by taking our cross. Many times we misunderstood that Jesus was alone on the cross. No, he was not. God the Father and God the Holy Spirit were together even on the cross. You know, God was there as Father who was suffering with the Son. And the Holy Spirit was there empowering his love to save all of the world. And this Holy Spirit started to work to save all of the world, beginning from the cross to all of us. So even these three persons with one nature of love, they were denying themselves for us and took the cross for us and follow their only will and plan to love us. Today, as we are here in this sanctuary, we have many, many crosses. And just like we had the children's time, on each cross, let us imagine that Jesus is looking at us. If we are aware of his eyes in our life, we will act very different. Again, we look very same. You know, all of us here on the Facebook, we worship together, we look same. But in Jesus' eyes, we are not. Because Jesus sees inside of our heart. Jesus knows who are true and who are fake. Now, as a Methodist, you know, we have John Wesley as our founder, and he had a very close expression about fake Christians, which is almost Christians. Yeah, that's John Wesley. And John Wesley also thought he was almost Christians. And this is almost Christian. They love to go to church, they love to worship, they wanted to do good things to please God, but all of desire came from their ego. They don't experience 
the power of the cross. And they don't like the Jesus going through the cross with the suffering. And they don't like the suffering that they had to take to love God and love others. And they, these almost Christians, are not very different from Satan. It's very sad. But the interesting thing is, the opposite, the word of almost Christian, is not a true Christian or a real Christian. It is all together Christian. <laughs> because these true Christians, they are always together with God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit who sacrificed themselves for our salvation. And these are all together Christians because they love to come together by the power of the Holy Spirit to love God and to serve others. That is all together Christian. And they find their power from the cross. On the cross, they found a sure trust and confidence from God to deny themselves. And on the cross, they meet Jesus, sees them, forgives them, loves them. And on this cross, they found the Holy Spirit helping them obey God's commandment, the new commandment to love God and others. So friends, today we are before cross here and Jesus sees us. Do you feel, experience the power of a cross? For now, we will have a special time. I will invite you to look at the cross and imagine or just to be with the cross and pray the whole to sit with Jesus and I will help your silent prayer with the music. If it's time to pray together, I would invite you to pray by sharing your joy first. <laughs> Can you share any joy? Miss Carol. Oh yeah, we pray for Carol, but we are grateful for her recovery. Any other joy? Great. Ron and Kate. <laughs> Joy, we celebrated mom's birthday. 
Yeah, celebration of first day. Yes, mute. Yes, we are all together Christians. <laughs> For concerns, um, I would invite you to open, I mean, to find your bulletin. Backside of the bulletin, we have the names of the uh, people. So during the prayer, um, I will invite you to speak out their names together. And then after we finish these names, you can still uh, lift up any names if you would like to do. So I will start with Joy. Uh, yeah, I don't see any prayer request from Facebook, but you can uh, make a comment with a pr uh, prayer request. Okay, would you pray with me? Oh, gracious and loving God, we thank you and praise you as you called us to be all together Christians. O oh Lord, you revealed our condition, how easy we are tempted to love ourselves and put ourselves in the first place. O oh Lord, I know it's good to love ourselves, but when we love ourselves with our human efforts, they make us sick, they make us harm to others. So Lord, help us to love ourselves with your cross by denying our desire, but take up your cross and follow you with all together Christians. Oh Lord, we lift up all the joys that we share. We are so grateful for Carol, Ron, and Kay as they are recovering in this healing process. Oh Lord, I'm so grateful for the celebration of a birthday in this month. We love Michelle and Joyce and the more people that we celebrate in this month. Oh Lord, bless them. Oh Lord, we're so grateful for the blessings as you use us for the meat for the hungry, to feed who are spiritually and physically hungry. Empower us so that we can take up our cross and follow you through this ministry. Oh Lord, we lift, we also are so grateful for this worship service as we are together. Sometimes we are confused to what we see. We see only wow, now we can see whether that's a Facebook screen or in the worship service. But you see the whole picture and see our hearts and receive this worship service. So Lord, we are so grateful for your amazing ministry using this worship service. Oh Lord, this time we want to pray for those who need our prayer. When my brothers and sisters and I lift up these names from the bulletin, please listen to these names and listen to our prayers. So we pray for Mid Red Brown, our prayer partners, John Pat, Mead Tim, Carol Floyd, Sally Vesser's yeah, Sally family, those who are seeking jobs, and the residents of a nursing home, and the heritage and hermitage, and students and staff, John Valenta, Owen Drolotto, Zena Council and those who protect us and health care providers. And we pray for Karen Pagliad family as they are grieving their father. We lift up all leaders, our Faye Wilfong, Wyatt Ewing, Debbie Miles, Deborah Rodis, Bill Powell, Jennifer uh, Di Giovanni, and Le Leona Ward, and Carol Oakley, Candy Williams, 
healing for the sick and their families, and Virginia Board of Ordained Ministry members and candidates. And Lord, we lift up more names. Let, oh Lord, as you hear these names in our hearts, in our bulletin, and on Facebook, and the name we share, O oh Lord, hold them tightly in your arms, as you are with them, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let them realize that, and let them feel your healing grace that change their body, their soul, and their life today. As we lift up this prayer, we pray together as our Savior taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and glory forever. Amen. This is the time to offer ourselves with our offering. Do you stand up for doxology? Gracious and loving God, we give thanks to you with all of our love and praise to you. And we give thanks to you as you use us with many, many blessings. The blessings of life, of talent, our time, so many things. And we return the portion of years so that you can continue to use us and expand your kingdom in Exmoor, in Virginia, in this world. So Lord, please remember all of our givers and their gifts, the gifts of time, their talent, 
their money and their life and help us to all together gather them for you so that you can bless them and use them for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. And our last hymn is, um, I have decided to follow Jesus. But children, I think you can help us today. So there is no rhythm instrument in the music. Maybe we can clap or you can use your um, spoon to make the rhythm. Shall we do that? Okay, are you with me? Okay. So this is our last hymn. I have decided to follow Jesus. They say something to us. Brian Lair, the good morning at first, and Laura Longorelli, Lisa Arnold, sending helping hands and heart, and we send you heart too. Uh, and Dolly Smith, the good morning at first. Uh, Santa Booth, um, saying, the, sending us the prayer hand. And uh, Linda Coughlin and Brian Hester are with us. So good to see you too. <laughs> So as we are ready to go, <laughs> please receive the benediction. People of effort, people of Christ, remember the world behind us, the cross before us. So follow the cross and listen to the voice of Jesus, making you deny yourself Take up your cross and follow Jesus Christ. And we may be remembered all together Christians in the name of Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. People of God said, Amen. And Miss Joyce will come help us to exit.